recent development in governance and corporate affairs. Another win for women as Gambia has taken a significant step forward towards women's rights by upholding its ban on female genital mutilation. This decision marks a victory for women's health and empowerment. Meanwhile, in Nigeria, the Labour Congress is warning of a potential month-long strike over minimum wage deregulation, highlighting serious concerns about equity and equality in the workforce. Both events underline the ongoing fight for justice and fair treatment. FGM. FGM. Um, FGM. <laughs> okay, so, okay. So, uh, Madam um, Chidedu is smiling. She has something to say about FGM. <laughs> okay. Um, like in Gambia in 2015, female genital mutilation was being prohibited. It was being passed into their laws and all that. But you know, the um, Gambia is predominantly Muslim sect. So their yeah. sects, they were like, it is part of their religion. It's not like part of their virtue, yeah. okay. their religious process and all that. So they are trying to bring in um, the bill back and overturn that prohibition and all that. But um, this week, it, was over, uh, it wasn't overturned. It was stopped. So mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on this? Like, mm -hmm. It's a win, actually. Yeah. And I just wish mo uh, more African countries will emulate this Some process. Some countries are actually silent on it. So kind of. Yeah, I know you don't like silent. They are not really neither here nor there. You know, okay. it's just yes. different groups yes. saying different things. The government is not really involved in the process. I know you've done extensive research on this FGM issue. I remember yes. some couple of years back you were doing yes, these female genital mutilations. And I remember the last time I traveled to Calabar for a conference. I think Tinapa to be precise. Oh, we were at Tinapa for a conference. That was 2018. And we had the opportunity of interacting with the locals, some of the local women there. Where they took us to fattening room, mm -hmm. the place they call fattening room, where they prepare <laughs> yes, women to be, marriages. prepare girls to be women, to, be women. Or for, to have marriage, marriageable virtues. And I think <laughs> circumcision was part a of part the conversation. Of the... So it's wow. a cultural thing. But the question is, why would jet harmful practices, practices in the name of, of or cultural, cultural or religious yeah. values? values? That's my concern. What is the adverse effect on the health and psychological effect and other things? These are some things. I'm really interested in doing. Personally, because, I'm still doing my research on this, but I'll take for instance in Gambia, we have like over seventy percent of the women have mm -hmm. been circumcised mm -hmm. according to the UN as of twenty twenty. So it's and they were circumcised below the age of five. So you can mm -hmm. imagine the pain, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. risk, the, the health risk. Over time it affects them, they are being traumatized, yeah. and it also affects their reproductive health. Mm -hmm. And also, it's, it encroaches on their rights, reproductive health rights as women. Okay, take for instance, um, let's come down to Nigeria in the South-South. There is this cultural system whereby, um, Delta to be precise, so I don't, Delta to be precise, there's this cultural belief that when a woman wants to get married, part of the rights, marriage rights, is to circumcise this female. Just imagine at this stage. At a grown age. At a grown age. Most of them are, they have health issues already. Just letting them bleed like that. Most of them, some of them die. They do die. So this is more like encroaching on their rights as humans. First of all, you are violating their human rights. Mm -hmm. And they are, secondly, their reproductive health rights. Mm -hmm. So that's just more like a big problem here in Africa. Not yeah, just Africa, some parts of the world. Yes, it's done in other parts of the world, like um, European, Eastern European countries. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when they go... Um, when they are like citizens of, let's say, US, for instance, sometimes they take them back to their countries to do that. You'll be surprised. But, but not as, not, not as, um, no, no, it's not encouraged in the US. See, it's not as, really, when, when it comes to culture, you know, there, there's just a limit to how you can use a particular paintbrush and sure. wipe down no, on everything. Sure. Um, when you're telling uh, people, that uh, oh, female genital mutilation, female genital mutilation. That's not what. That's not how some people see it. Yes, mm. that's not how some people. It's it, for for some is a rite of passage. Yes, and it's you see that it's and pride. yes. However, you look at it, you know, um, and there are different types of female, female genital, genital mutilation. Yes, mutilation. Yes, there, there are different levels. Different levels, you know. But just on the, the, that they are four type of, from the minimal to the very extreme. extreme. And the very extreme is what you find in the Middle Eastern 
place it. It's called so, infibulation. Infibulation, so everything about everything. a woman yeah. is stitched up. Stitched up, yes. Till, and that in itself presents a lot of health challenges. Yeah, yeah. Because at particular times of the month when the woman sees her period, it just has a little mm -hmm. space Passage, to, yeah. for it to, pass. to pass. And then the, the whatever that stays behind will, will cause a lot of infection. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, mm -hmm. in some of those places, if a girl goes, you know, to ease herself, an elderly person would listen. If um, she's she tricking, trickling, that shows she's still intact. Exactly. If there is a the rush, rush, that means she, she has done something. Wow. Bad so that makes sense. Yes, and for some, um, infibulation just doesn't stop after marriage. Um, even after you've had your, if your husband is traveling wow. for a long time, he can. Stitch call the woman to stitch up, stitch you back. So, oh, that's wow. so if you compare that to excision, where Different. that is happening in some places here, here Nigeria, where they yeah. take out a portion, Cut up. they Something take out else. a portion. And now, uh, while we're doing, uh, 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 don't forget that the gatekeepers for female circumcision or uh, genital mutilation are women. 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 Yes. So yes. If, if you go to a place and say, ah, here for a person female genital mutilation, that word, that label alone is enough for them to turn away from you mm -hmm. because True. that is not how yes, they see right. so, yeah. Sometimes to even talk to someone and you come and say you are a thief, mm. the person is already mm -hmm. defensive. defensive. Yeah. But they say, oh, I hear you practice this art of tapping. You know, you just take something mm -hmm. away that is not necessarily yeah, your. Yes. The person might say, eh, well. Mm -hmm. Because in secondary school, we had something called tapping. Mm -hmm. You take, if they steal your socks, you come and take another person's socks. But if you hear that, if you call me a thief, that will be a problem. But if yeah. you call me a tapper, I might, might slow down. So slow down. for me, the labeling of it, it's already a problem for some people. It is their culture you're already labeling bad. I'm not an advocate for genital mutilation or mm -hmm. circumcision. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand that when it comes to culture, there should be other ways of addressing, yes, you're addressing right. it. So that these people do not feel that, oh, you're bringing your Western idea. Yeah, yeah. They are thrust it down. Are it on. Mm -hmm. There are grown women now mm -hmm. who are opting for circumcision. Wow. And for me, yes, they are grown women. They are, they are know, advocates you know, for female the, circumcision. Where, where I went yes. on my research and campaign, so we go there. We really don't, like you said, we really don't thrust it down their throat like, this is female, female this is bad. We talk, we come to, down to their levels. But some of them, they are like grassroots women. Mm -hmm. we, come, we came down to their level. We discussed with them. Some of them like, oh, over time, they realized that they don't really like it. Mm -hmm. It's not really something they would have approved of. Because some of them were being um, circumcised when they were babies. Mm -hmm. So over time, it affected their sexual health. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they really don't enjoy sex with their husbands as mm -hmm. they should. So they talked, they said, if they had been um, well-educated with time, mm -hmm. then one was like, yes, definitely she's never going to circumcise her Actually, daughters. Mm -hmm. So it's more like a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. When you teach them these things, when you enlighten them on the dangers, mm -hmm. you tell them about the dangers. You don't just tell them, Oh, your culture is bad. Mm. You tell them downside. They want to know. They want to understand their bodies mm. more. You yeah. know, over time, they got confused about their bodies. They don't know what is happening to them. Mm. So when you come to their level, when you tell them this is what it is, they learn and they pass it down to their children. So what, it's what is happening to their body? Because again, that is a danger of coming in with manufactured uh, problems and thrusting on these people. So if you say you're going to have this problem, and her mother, her grandmother didn't have it, or mm -hmm. aunties, then what you're saying does not make any sense to okay. We circumcise for different reasons. reasons so yes. I think one mm -hmm. is to preserve your virtue, virtue as a woman. Yeah. Another one, which is quite interesting, is that women in particular communities are circumcised at seven months of their first pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Yes. First yes. pregnancy. First yes. pregnancy. And I'll tell you dangerous. that the reason why they did it, it's a myth which um, has stayed on over the years, even in some East African countries, they believe that um, the woman's genitalia would get so big while she's pregnant that it will obstruct the, the birth of the child. child. So they That's take it myth. off. Somewhere in Kenya, they believe that a woman's genitalia grows so long, it will be dropping on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember the white woman who went there to conduct the research. She said, 
I'm a woman in my 60s. I have been living with mine. It has not grown. Wow. So that's how, exactly. that's how, yeah, I was, I was watching her say it. So my point is that when we say female genital mutilation and certain cultures insist they are just doing circumcision, circumcision. don't forget the clamor to stop circumcision also affects the boys. The boys are circumcised yes, at eight yes. days. Yes, yes. So people are saying, no, our boys too are our yes, babies. Yes. They are children. Is it what they want? So if you're clamoring for the women or for us to talk for females, the boys are there too. Hmm. I was going to ask, why is it that we always associate pain to women? Yeah, I know yes, they are male but most times it's all about women. If they're not talking about early marriage, girl child marriage, yeah, female genital mutilation, one thing, one thing. Why is it only women? Why, do, do, why do, 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 do you have, a, do you have an eight year old husband? No, I don't. Do you have um, a 10 year old husband? No, we yeah. don't. 14 year old husband? We don't. But we have 10 year old That's what I'm saying. Now, why why is that the painful things are always associated to women? Well, it boils, it most times it boils women, down to um, culture, culture, culture yeah. Yeah. Well, we, it's, time, a pitch, it's a patriarchy. It's a patriarchy, society, exactly, yeah. exactly we that we live in. in. And exactly. men, um, yeah, some people say I should be feminist, but some people would say that women are lesser than men. They are wow. here. And that's, 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 that's what they are here to serve them. That's, 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 that's the serve them, yes. So they have conditioned down. over the years to just see women, that women as things that men. exist, you know, serve serve could men. serve and procreate. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, it's just, so anything that will make them continue in this line of work they will do to it. help man <laughs> and that's why some people are talking Pushing about the EI, EI. You just brought them for the EI. That yes, um, the EI. Um, diversity uh, equality. Just, and so, okay. and don't forget that diversity also includes uh, uh, races. races yes. Yes. So it's not just about gender, uh, yeah, yeah. women. Yeah. Women, yeah. inclusivity, of including women in the things we're doing. Should just be natural. We're just two sexes in this exactly. world, man and oh, woman. Man. Woman, exactly. So why can I mean now they are saying the other variety, but bottom line, man, man and woman. woman. Biological I, woman, biological man. Uh -huh. So that one is there. So why can't we just live in? Peace? So that means the problem with FGM now is number one fixing patriarchal. Patriarchal, yes. Let's be open to whatever scientific proven exactly um, um, because you say you say the, the woman you yeah. saying the woman's yeah. um, body is going to like make her promiscuous it's something it's it's a myth. Yeah. and then you don't say that's a myth exactly then who are the men being promiscuous with or who are the women being promiscuous with are they not men we should ask you just like we should ask you it's coming from a religious and when they when they captured the woman at the biblical story where that woman was going to be stoned to death for committing adultery the question is who did she commit adultery with exactly so that's